Hi friends, I am going to talk about a simple form submission today. So this is my form. So it's created using HTML, CSS and this application built using UCLA, UJS and TypeScript. Okay, so as you know like uh, to submit something we need a, a backend API. So I'm going to submit all these details to my SQL Server database. So for that I need an API. So this is my Swagger and so inside here you can see like add in entry API. So I will be passing all these uh, objects from my form. So once I call this API uh, from my form it will be some all this uh, data will be submitted to the backend. So that's the flow happens in the application. So I am not going to explain the backend part in this module. I am focusing only on the UI side like how you create a form like this. So as you can see like there are some mandatory fields. There is a calendar control. There is a drop down. There is a, like a number input field. And there is like auto select controls. So, so I will be explaining about all this control. So for validation I have not used any third party control. So there are uh, plenty of uh, like uh, libraries available which support uh, UJS like vValidate and Validate. So these all are uh, good controls and uh, for uh, calendar uh, you have a like a UJS date picker. So and I am going for the uh, other validation libraries because I, my requirement is like very limited validations only need to show. So but most of the things you can uh, do it without including any third party framework. So I prefer to do if it's I can avoid it uh, other library I will try to do it in uh, code itself. So so I'll just go through the go through the code and you will come to know like how each fields are getting validated. So as you can see like if I click on submit it will show like all the mandatory fields and uh, it will be showing in a red color so uh, so let me just uh, so first let me talk about the other plugin we have like it's a, a vjs date picker so you can see like how you can include it in your project so just uh, do the npm install or yarn add then just import it so once you import it it will be you can use it in the components wherever you want okay and you use the toaster library as well. I will show you that as well. So let me go to the form. So this is my form. So I use like a BEM architecture like block element uh, modifier for styling. So you can see like I have a row element. So it has like a column and the column also will be a column element will be having a modifier like a right as well it is there so you can see like label and its input field so or once you surrender anything press the key at that time itself we are doing the validation and submission as well so so and here we are bind, binding a input error class so that's the one which we are seeing here like if any error is there we are appending a uh, We are appending a like a border input. So this color we are appending if, if there is if there is any error occurred. So uh, and we are displaying this span as well. So this all like basic uh, TypeScript thing like you have a flag if it's there then display it. That's the way we are binding it. So then drop down also like. Uh, uh, you can see this like options. I am fetching it from the back end all the values. So, so that data like it will be fetching from the particular uh, uh, object and will be looping through it and will be displaying the value here. So and this is the calendar control. So for calendar control we are date picker and uh, we are just passing the default parameter as per the documentation. It will display the calendar control okay and then what we will check uh, the quantity i have given it as like a number field so like input type you can mention number so it will, it will allow only number so this all like a normal uh, like basic 
what you can tell normal uh, HD like a form elements so this uh, and the button also you can see like I have given some custom style style some animation also I got for the submit button so you can also do all the, do all those all sort of things so now I'll just go to the style part so so you know like I use like uh, this architecture like uh, I have HTML separately and just referring it here and I have the uh, autocomplete I'll explain after this because it's, uh, there are more things in that so here on load itself I am getting all my uh, the lookup values I want to display so you can see like you need to display the brand name inventory type so calendar control like this just any date which I want so past date or so quantity it will take only number so inventory name I will take like uh, demo inventory ok now so now we finished all the basic validation part yeah I was just going through the CSS part so you can see like you can mention row I use flexbox uh, so you can like flex uh, row column that way like uh, you can arrange all the items you want um, so this is the like for uh, showing that animation I used a pulsate uh, animation uh, so you can mention like in each uh, set time what you want like you were just uh, scaling it up and just go coming back to normal okay so so that's all about the uh, basic details so this all like just ap call we will be fetching that up in the back end brand details type details uh, location details so now we will go to the custom control which i created for the uh, auto complete so it is for the location store location so i created a custom control like auto complete component uh, so there i need to so it's a shared component so i thought like it let it be shared so if i want to use it in another place so we can just pass the data to it so and it will just give the selected value as the uh, uh, you from parent you pass the props and from the auto complete component you will get the selected value okay so this is the auto complete com uh, component we are, we are created so we need to have a input field and then we need to have a div and just uh, look through the item and uh, just display all the items so uh, so the thing is that uh, you need to there are like a, I'll show you like here instead of click I used mouse down event because if I use click even here uh, because uh, once I tab out I am just closing the pop-up so um, blur will execute earlier than uh, before then click so before the value is set to that particular test box yeah, you will be more out of the focus so so that you need to use the mouse down event and then here you need to use the uh, like blur so if you check the component it is like uh, we are so here also like uh, we are using uh, TypeScript so we can specify that type whatever you want so whenever you search change anything so we are uh, so so as you see like here like if you click on this one it is just opening this field so as soon as you sir, click there we are uh, making this visible true and we are displaying all the data there okay and uh, so this filter result it will just come here and it will it will display the data whatever is there it will just display and whichever the value is selected we will set that value to the uh, corresponding field and will display it over there ok uh, so now another thing is like this one I uh, see here you can see the store names are not populated so this is coming based on the store location so if I select store location the store name will be get populated so, so I'll show you like how you can implement that or that also so 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 that's all about uh, this auto complete it's uh, pretty easy like there are many other third party like, uh, uh, like plugins are available for this auto complete but 
If you created your own, like you can include a new features to it. You will have a control over it. You can um, you can have new features, whatever the way you want to change it, you can modify it. So uh, so whenever tab out, we are closing it. So um, yeah, if, if it's clicked at that time only we are uh, making it open and another thing is like uh, we are uh, any change happened to the data at that time we are watching it so what will happen so if user reset it we need to clear it out so all those things will be done using this watch and we need to style you need to make it like a first uh, like a uh, the input type like relative and the result you need to make it absolute it will be like in stacked way like the like you are seeing, so these are the styles we have. Mm. Now, it's all about the styling part and auto complete. So now we'll just go and uh, yeah. So another thing, like here we need to just receive the ID and value. So if you check the uh, type of this drop down, you can see it's just ID and value. So in create inventory. I'm just. Uh, taking the getting the location data so I'm just mapping it to ID and value so if you want to map any other lookup data just format it as uh, ID and value and pass it to the prop so if you go you see here you can see you are passing the prop data this will be binded in the uh, binded over here and on selection you will be get receiving an event here like you will be receiving this event uh, the selected value will be received and then you will be calling the other uh, API and loading the data so how like you will be knowing like how to debug uh, this because so you can just go to source and hit control P and you can just search the component you want now it will give all sort of components so better you Switch from here the component you want. So, so I'll just go here, inventory, create. So, on selected. So, I just wanted to show the flow like how the value comes here uh, when you select a particular item. So, so this is like a default basic property we have like from parent we will pass using prop and from child to parent we will be using events so this is the place we are emitting the value so I will just change it to Kochi so you can see like I just uh, pass the id and value from here and this is in the creator this parent component I will see the value and I am calling the other guy so here we got the value then i just give some tag some detail then give the price uh, and then get three so so now like uh, i need to show one more thing that is a toast i used to display the submission part this also like you can avoid it and you can have your own message displaying mechanism so data inserted so just go to the submit part so so on submit we are just calling the validation so everywhere like we are just checking the model is empty then we are showing we are telling that that's the how we are showing the uh, validation part so if all validations are satisfied then we are calling the API if the PA return the response as true, that means the data is inserted. Then uh, we will be so then we will be uh, coming here and we will be uh, displaying the toast message as you see. Now we can see like the data is not got cleared. So then I will call this a reset. In this reset, I will be just uh, calling all the values like setting all to its default value. So this to enable this toaster uh, uh, you need to 
include this view toasted plugin so it has many features it's uh, kind of a big plugin but if you have limited things uh, then you don't need to include that you can have like your own custom logic to display the message so i'll be changing that later like i didn't get time to create a custom toaster so so that's all about the uh, form submission part hope you understood it so if you have any doubts or any questions related to this one so you can uh, you can comment you can comment here so i'll be looking into that and I want so this kind of uh, crud operation so this is like a create creating an inventory so the searching of inventory part i already explained in another video so you can check that uh, in the, my previous video so that's all folks thank you